Exxon announces three new discoveries. CXC Council delays exams by three weeks. Man caught red-handed selling branded weed. And what happens when politicians only tell you half the story? I am Noriko Bulford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Exxon has announced that it has made three new discoveries offshore Guyana and increased its estimate of the recoverable resource of the starboard block to nearly 11 billion oil equivalent barrels. The three discoveries are southeast of the Lisa and Payara developments, and they are the third, fourth, and fifth discoveries made by Exxon in Guyana for this year. They are named Barrelai 1, Lukanani 1, and Patwa 1. So, drill baby drill. According to GPL, an excavator making contact with a power line on the east bank triggered a complete shutdown of the whole electrical grid. This happened at approximately 10.48 a.m. yesterday to the L3 transmission line, which links the company's Garden of Eden power plant to the Golden Grove substation, meaning that the whole system was shut down and the company was forced to reconnect each segment of the grid one by one, meaning that some people did not receive current again until after 2.24 p.m. And of course, as always, no one will be held responsible for the all-day blackout and the damage that it's caused. Today, the CXC Council announced that this year's exams have been pushed back by three weeks to May 23rd, 2022, with the plans being made to make results available in late August or early September. Official figures show that across the 16 participating territories, there are 105,078 CSEC candidates, 25,429 CAPE candidates, and 4,736 for the CCSLC. The registrar added that students have the option to recall school-based assessments and modify them as they see fit as long as the final grading has not been uploaded. The original SBA submission deadline was June 30th, 2022, but that too has been pushed back. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is 2014 Audi Q3. It comes with Bluetooth, mug rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, electronic parking brake, bar camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $5.6 million. All pay down as low as $1,120,000 down, with around $108,000 monthly for five years, and it's yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info, or visit the showrooms at 171 Peter Roche, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lama Street, and tell them the Rico Century for this sweet deal. A 24-year-old man was caught red-handed selling weed in Kuru Kururu yesterday afternoon. But when he was caught, police were surprised to find that the budding businessman understands the first lesson of modern business. Branding is key. The officers found over 140 grams of weed on him, many of which were neatly packaged like they came from some California weed shop or something. Anyway, the wannabe marketing executive is in police custody and is expected to face charges soon. Today, 33-year-old Damien Bassoon was finally charged for the 2018 murder of 27-year-old Taj Andrew Jarvis. After spending the last four years on the run from the police, he turned himself in on April 25th. He was not required to plead to the capital offense, which occurred on March 30th, 2018, at Bar and Alexander Street's Kitty Georgetown. Bassoon was remanded to prison until May 17th. According to reports on the night in question, Bassoon allegedly approached the victim and asked him for some money, but the victim refused. This triggered an argument that ended with Bassoon fatally stabbing Jarvis. 29-year-old security officer Ronaldo Saul Dripple died last night at the Woodlands Hospital, three days after a car crashed into him on the Pleasant Public Road. A statement from the police said that the collision occurred on the evening of April 23rd of this year. Jai Kizun, a 39-year-old economic consultant, had driven his vehicle into the intersection when Saul Dripple's motorcycle slammed into the vehicle, severely injuring him in the process. Kizun was released on $300,000 station bail. Do you own a truck? No, not the disease, I mean a real truck, like Darth, International, Freightliner, Bedford TM, or Scammel. Then come, get high-quality truck parts at the lowest prices at Powered Automotive. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Eccles, or call them on telephone number 6970171. Say big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. Guyana's chief medics, Lolita Ribeiro, has died after losing her battle with cancer. 
Medics Roberto hails from Region 1 and served the public health sector for some 25 plus years. She started off her career as a professional nurse and later succeeded in the medics training program. In 2016, she was appointed chief medics for Guyana, a position she held until her passing. Now for today's oil update. According to Hess Incorporated, the Payara development project is expected to start in late 2023 sooner than the anticipated 2024 start-up date. The project has an expected capacity of 220,000 barrels of oil per day. Payara will utilize a third oil ship known as the Prosperity FPSO vessel and will target an estimated resource base of about 600 million oil equivalent barrels. Production has already started at the Lisa Phase 1 and Phase 2 projects. The Lisa Unity and Destiny FPSO vessels are in use at those projects. However, earlier this month, the government of Ghana approved the production license for the Yellowtail project, scheduled to start up in late 2025. Take a look at this beauty being constructed in a gated community called Richmondville in Ghana. It features four bedrooms, one pool with 7,000 square feet of living space, along with modern amenities. Contact Sheriff Construction on 592-618-5702. Now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? When politicians disrespect our collective intelligence. Last Saturday, our president boasted that every month, Region 3 takes in about 250,000 US a month when the oil supply boats come to shore to purchase fruits, vegetables, and water from the markets and small shops in the area. But Kaito News is reminding us that while this is happening, Ghana is forced to spend around 1.5 million US dollars a day to rent the 30 supply boats that service the oil and gas sector. While the oil boats do bring an influx of cash to vendors and small shop owners in the region, he glossed over the major fact that Guyana's earnings from oil production are being deducted to pay for the supply boats. And let's be honest, the money they spend on the food and all these other things they actually buy when they come on shore is probably going to also be deducted as cost recovery as well meaning that those thousands of dollars in revenue is just going to go right back into their pockets in Houston. Kind of like that trick where you stick a dollar to a fishing line and when you get the snack out of the vending machine, you just reel it back in. Except instead of getting a bag of Cheetos, we're talking about making money off our nation's patrimony. And to allow that to continue is pretty stupid. Now for our uncut news, views poll question of the day. Every day we pose the question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your answers in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday, I asked what should we really do to try to combat this consolidation of power that's currently going on. Unfortunately, Dio Narayan Singh has a very pessimistic view. He says nothing can work in Guyana. Too many thieves and vagabonds. And unfortunately, that way of thinking is what's going to continue to allow this to happen. So, I'm sorry, but I reject that one. Spartan Life says start a countrywide movement to stop corruption and hold the government accountable. A recognized foundational committee can be created that deals directly with the needs of the people and relate to the dictatorship. Well, I guess you can define them as a dictatorship, but ultimately at the end of the day, you have to understand it's about the government, it's about the courts, and it's about the people. Whenever the government or the courts get too much power, well, you see the oppression that we see today. And to close off on a word of encouragement, Guyanese Messenger says, get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Indeed, just like Bob Marley told us. Before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way to as much money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. I've identified the consolidation of power around the vice president as one of the greatest issues affecting this nation. So I want to know what do you think is one of the greatest issues affecting the country? So think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. And check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying goodnight, folks.